Bob Hope was a comedian, an actor known for his quick wit and ability to make people laugh. He starred in many films and entertained troops during World War II. Now, we're curious to hear from you. Do you have a personal story about how Bob Hope has touched your life or made you smile? Perhaps you remember the first time you saw him on screen. What is your most treasured memory of this beloved entertainer? Your stories and memories are important to us, and we invite you to share them in the comments. Stay tuned, as we have many interesting facts about Bob Hope's life to share with you, including some that are funny, surprising, and even a little sad. Let's celebrate the laughter and joy he brought to so many. Share your experiences and keep watching to discover more about Bob Hope's remarkable journey. Bob Hope was a comedian and actor with a career spanning nearly 80 years. He is known for his work in vaudeville, theater, radio, television, and films. His filmography includes over 70 feature films. Notable films starring Bob Hope include The Road to Singapore and its sequels where he starred alongside Bing Crosby and Dorothy Lumore. These films are considered classics and are recommended for those new to his work. Other must-watch movies include My Favorite Brunette and The Pale Face, which showcases comedic talent and timing. These films are accessible to new audiences and highlight his significant role in the entertainment industry. With a knack for making audiences laugh, his skill lay in the quick delivery of jokes, often poking fun at himself. His talent was recognized with an honorary commander of the Order of the British Empire in 1976. He also brought his comedic flair to the airwaves, reprising his role as Sidney Milburn in a radio adaptation of The Lemon Drop Kid, which aired in 1951, showcasing his versatility across different entertainment mediums. Despite advancing years, his personal life remained active, with relationships extending well into his later decades. His family grew through adoption, welcoming four children Eleanor Avis, Anthony, Linda, and Kelly. His role as Michael Joseph Valentine in Where There's Life marked a notable point in his career, being part of a significant collection of films that later found a new audience through television and home video releases, ensuring that his work continued to be enjoyed by viewers across different generations and formats. In the world of comedy and entertainment, few have left a mark as distinct and delightful as the character portrayals by a certain comedian. He brought laughter to audiences as painless Peter Potter in The Pale Face, where his performance was so beloved that it was adapted for a 60-minute radio broadcast with the original actors lending their voices once again. His versatility shone through as Ronnie Jackson in My Favorite Brunette, where he not only acted, but also recorded songs related to the film, showcasing his musical talent alongside his comedic timing. His portrayal of Monsieur Bocquera was part of a significant collection of films that found new life on television, becoming a favorite across the United States. This character's adventures were not only broadcast widely, but also preserved for future generations to enjoy on DVD, ensuring that the laughter he brought to the screen would continue to be shared and appreciated. In a notable radio event, the performance of Humphrey Sorrowful Jones was brought to life once again through a broadcast adaptation, with the original actors returning to their roles. This actor also had family ties in the industry, being the younger sibling of Jim Hope. Despite a successful career, not all feedback was positive. He experienced a moment of discontent when criticized by a fellow performer during a television special. This incident occurred backstage and involved a comment about his acting skills, which did not sit well with him. A man of humor and heart, he brought joy to audiences worldwide, not just through his films, but also by his dedication to entertaining troops and contributing to television. In The Lemon Drop Kid, he played Sidney Milburn, a role that subtly nodded to his connections in the entertainment industry and his personal interests. A clever reference to Johnny Burke, who worked with him on musical scores, shows the interconnected nature of his career. His commitment to bringing smiles was recognized in 1959 with the Emmy Trustees Award, honoring his extensive efforts to entertain and uplift spirits globally. His portrayal of Sidney Milburn also included a humorous mention of Indians, likely a playful hint at his own stake in the Cleveland Indians baseball team. His work remains a testament to his talent and generous spirit. A stroke of luck came his way when a fellow actor declined a movie role, leading to his first significant opportunity in cinema. His career took a serious turn when he faced health challenges, being hospitalized with severe respiratory issues. Recovering just in time to witness a national tragedy, he and his spouse shared their deep distress with the nation. His television show became a hub for Hollywood's finest, drawing in not just fans but friends from the industry, showcasing a roster of stars who graced the stage, making it a beloved gathering spot for entertainers of all calibers. 
A true supporter of the Military Academy in Wayne, Pennsylvania, this individual's dedication to service led to an award being named in his honor, celebrating distinguished service to the country. On the airwaves, listeners were treated to a radio adaptation of a popular film, where he reprised his role as a detective alongside a famous co-star. Despite the on-screen jokes about age, he and his co-star shared the same birth year, with only a few days separating their birthdays. Their camaraderie was evident as they both turned 49 in the year of their film's release, showcasing their timeless appeal and humor. In a comedic scene, a man tries to conceal a record in a chandelier and stumbles upon a champagne bottle, jokingly noting a previous visitor's fondness for drink. This same man, known for his quick wit, also played a dentist in a Western comedy, a role he later revisited on radio with his co-star. Beyond his film roles, he was pivotal in shaping the style of comedy that has become a staple in American entertainment, setting the standard for comedians who followed. In a career filled with memorable performances, the role of painless Peter Potter in The Pale Face stands out. This character brought laughter to audiences during a radio adaptation alongside Jane Russell. Similarly, the portrayal of Monsieur Beaucaire showcased his comedic talent in a radio version of the film. His timing was impeccable, especially noted in Road to Bali, where his humorous suggestion to get popcorn as Bing Crosby began to sing resonated with young moviegoers, prompting an amusing exodus for snacks. These moments highlight his ability to connect with audiences through humor and charm. In the twilight of his film career, he took on the role of Milford Farnsworth in Alias Jesse James, a period piece that marked his final foray into the genre before focusing solely on modern day comedies. Another memorable performance was as Harold Gridley in Road to Bali, where he humorously referenced James Petrillo, known for his firm leadership of the Chicago Musicians Union, during a scene with Bing Crosby. Beyond the silver screen, his achievements in entertainment were recognized with an induction into the Radio Hall of Fame, honoring his significant contributions to the medium. By 1969, his financial success soared beyond $150 million due to wise investments in business and property. His brother, Jack Hope, not only produced some of his shows, but was also honored in the dedication of his memoir, I Owe Russia 1 on 200. Unique in his standing, he enjoyed the privilege of appearing on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson at any moment he chose, a testament to his stature in entertainment. For five decades, a comedian dedicated his time to bringing laughter and comfort to American troops stationed far from home. His commitment saw him travel the globe, making stops wherever he could share a joke and a smile with those in uniform. His presence was a reminder of home, a slice of Americana, served up with a side of humor. This same man brought his light-hearted touch to the silver screen, even making a memorable appearance as a friendly ice cream vendor in a world of whimsical creatures, where his familiar tune played softly reminiscent of childhood summers. Back home, his legacy is cemented not just in the hearts of fans, but also on the map, with a street bearing his name in a city of stars, intersecting with other luminaries, a crossroads of entertainment history. Reaching the age of 100 is a significant milestone, and in the world of entertainment, it's a rare feat. Among those who achieved this were George Burns and Senor Wences, with Bob Hope also joining this centenarian club. Hope's portrayal of Sidney Milburn in The Lemon Drop Kid became so associated with him that it became a point of humor during an Academy Awards ceremony. His appearance as an ice cream vendor in The Muppet Movie was part of a tradition of notable guest stars on The Muppet Show, a list that includes Steve Martin, Milton Berle, and many others showcasing the collaborative spirit of the era's entertainers. Starting a beloved holiday tradition, he lit the Christmas tree at Disneyland and enjoyed a festive evening with his wife. His presence in The Greatest Show on Earth was more than just a cameo. It was part of a series of events that led to a pivotal moment in television history. His friend Lucille Ball, after a series of film roles and a strategic career move, went on to create the legendary show I Love Lucy with her husband, Daisy Arnaz. In recognition of his significant contributions, he received one of the highest honors from the British monarchy, an honorary knighthood, solidifying his status as a respected figure in entertainment. He shared the golf course with Prescott Bush, connecting him to a family that would see two of its members become presidents. His early career was a mix of successes and setbacks. He tried his hand at various roles in vaudeville and even faced rejection in a screen test. Yet he found a stride on Broadway, leading to a successful transition to film. Contrary to popular belief, his partnership with Dolores was a professional one, not bound by marriage. A true commitment to laughter and love marked his life. 
sharing insights on comedy in 1998, he contributed to a book that explored the craft of bringing joy through humor. His dedication extended to his personal life, where his marriage became a record-setting example of enduring partnership in Hollywood, lasting until his death. On tours to uplift spirits during wartime, he maintained a strict rule for his team to keep morale high, despite the hardships they witnessed. This commitment was only broken once, revealing the depth of his empathy amidst the laughter he brought to so many. Reaching the age of 100 is a milestone few achieve, and this individual joined the ranks of centenarians alongside George Burns and Senior Wences, both of whom also graced the stage of The Muppet Show. Before the bright lights of Hollywood, he entered the boxing ring as Packy East, a name that marked his brief stint as a professional boxer. His role as painless Peter Potter in The Pale Face stands out among the many films he starred in. This film, part of a large collection from Paramount, found its way to television audiences through MC Universal and remains a piece of classic cinema available on DVD for new generations to enjoy. In a career filled with notable moments, one individual stood out for his achievements in entertainment. Honored with the Kennedy Center Honors, his talent was recognized at the highest level in 1985. His name, now known to all as Bob, was once Leslie, but a twist of fate and a classroom joke led to a change that would stick for life. Before fame, his humor and resemblance to another famous comedian won him a Charles Chaplin look-alike contest, setting the stage for a career that would bring laughter to many. In a memorable scene, he humorously offers to buy a rabbit for his co-star, nodding to a famous role involving a similar pet. His comedic adventures continued alongside Bing Crosby in a series of films that took them from Singapore to Hong Kong, spanning over two decades. His talent also reached the White House, where he performed for presidents from Roosevelt to Clinton, bringing laughter to the highest office in the nation. In a comedic turn of events during the filming of Off Limits, the actor's stunt double was unexpectedly knocked unconscious and tumbled out of a jeep. This mishap occurred during a vigorous training sequence. In a generous act, acres of land initially purchased for a racetrack were repurposed for the greater good. The land was donated to establish what is now a top-rated hospital, the Eisenhower Medical Center. Within this medical hub, a building honors his legacy, adorned with statues of him and his wife, Dolores Hope. Adjacent to it stands Hope Square, another testament to his philanthropy. In a unique blend of entertainment and activism, the song for what it's worth, known for its anti-war sentiment, was performed by Woodland Creatures in a television episode featuring the actor, bringing a powerful message to a diverse audience. During a time of global conflict, he teamed up with Bing Crosby to create laughter amidst the uncertainty, producing three memorable road films. His life off-screen was filled with moments of shared celebration, notably with his wife Dolores, as they made a tradition of jointly celebrating their birthdays each year. His dedication to entertaining troops led to a unique honor in 1997, when he was recognized by the United States Congress as an honorary veteran, a tribute to his unwavering support for the armed forces. In the film My Favorite Brunette, the character Ronnie Jackson, portrayed by the actor, shares a connection with his real-life counterpart's educational background, mentioning a high school in Cleveland, Ohio, which mirrors the actor's own schooling journey in the city. Beyond his on-screen roles, he showed a commitment to social causes, notably through the establishment and expansion of a home dedicated to the care of disabled children in Port Arthur, Texas, reflecting his dedication to giving back to the community. A figure celebrated for his humor and warmth, he earned the respect and admiration of both the public and his peers. His achievements are numerous, but notably he was awarded 58 honorary degrees, a testament to his influence and appeal across generations. His talent and contributions to entertainment were so significant that he was named the entertainer of the 20th century by various polls and publications. A memorable moment in his career was when he shared the stage with Bing Crosby in December 1932, marking the beginning of a legendary partnership that would delight audiences for years to come. On his 99th birthday, he was at his Toluca Lake home, just after celebrating his wife's 93rd birthday. In honor of his dedication to entertaining troops, a veteran's chapel was named for him. He portrayed Sidney Milburn in The Lemon Drop Kid and was romantically linked with Marilyn Maxwell, known in Hollywood circles as Mistress Bob Hope. His early years included graduating from Fairmount High School in Cleveland. In a moment that bridged entertainment and politics, a notable figure at the Oscars prompted a swift response to ensure the ceremony remained apolitical. This came after an unexpected political endorsement was read on stage, leading to a quick disavowal of any political statements. 
Before finding his footing in the film industry, this individual took to the ring as a boxer and then graced the vaudeville stage with his comedic and dance performances. His transition to Broadway marked the beginning of a significant shift in his career. He later teamed up with two other stars in a series of adventure comedy films, with their penultimate movie taking them on a whimsical journey to Bali, which also marked the end of their collaboration with a major film studio. A notable moment in film history was when a comedic actor took on the role of Humphrey Sorrowful Jones, sharing the screen with Lucille Ball. This film marked the beginning of a series of four movies they would do together. Off screen, this actor's wit was just as sharp. After a surprising presidential election, he sent a one-word telegram that simply read unpacked to the newly victorious president, a message that found a permanent place in the Oval Office. His life and career detailed in a comprehensive biography reflect a journey through comedy that left a significant mark on the genre. In the comedic adventure Road to Bali, he brought laughter as Harold Gridley, and his charm was on full display alongside Jane Russell in both The Pale Face and its sequel. His legacy extends beyond the screen, with a naval vessel, the USNS Bob Hope, carrying his name across the seas. His humor was so admired that he was the first to be honored at the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast, a tradition that began on the Dean Martin Show and continued due to its popularity. In the world of entertainment, partnerships often lead to memorable projects that capture the audience's attention. Such was the case with a planned film that would have brought together two of the biggest names in comedy. Although the project, titled The Road to Paris, never came to fruition, the anticipation it generated speaks volumes about the popularity of the duo. On a notable evening in 1989, during a prestigious film awards ceremony, a legendary comedian shared the stage with a beloved actress. Their presence was met with overwhelming applause, a testament to their enduring appeal and the joy they brought to millions. That night, they introduced a performance that showcased the next generation of talent, a symbolic passing of the torch to actors who would go on to have significant careers in the industry. Earlier in his career, this comedian portrayed a character named Humphrey Sorrowful Jones in a film that became part of a significant deal involving a large number of movies sold for television distribution. This particular film made its television debut in Philadelphia and subsequently aired across various cities, marking the beginning of its journey into the homes of viewers nationwide. Years later, it found its way into the digital age, being released on DVD as part of a collection celebrating the comedian's work, ensuring that new audiences could continue to enjoy his performances. During the 1950s, he took on the role of part owner for the Cleveland Indians baseball team. His love for the sport was highlighted in a guest appearance on the television show I Love Lucy, where his character was set to attend a baseball game between the Yankees and the Indians at Yankee Stadium. In another venture into entertainment, he played Michael Joseph Valentine in the film Where There's Life. This performance was later adapted into a radio play by the Screen Guild Theater, where he reprised his role alongside Scene Asso. His versatility extended to the Western comedy alias Jesse James, where he portrayed Milford Farnsworth. In a memorable scene, Farnsworth uses a rattlesnake to defeat a Gila monster, despite the latter not being native to the setting of Missouri, highlighting a humorous disregard for geographical accuracy in the film. From a young age, after moving to the United States, he embraced the stage and screen, leaving a mark on the entertainment industry. His dedication to bringing laughter and comfort to American soldiers during times of conflict earned him the unique honor from Congress. His legacy continues to live on, not just in memories, but also in physical form, with theaters in London, California, and Texas bearing his name, serving as cultural landmarks and tributes to his influence in the arts. In the early 1930s, a well-known comedian formed a personal and professional partnership with Grace Louise Troxell. Their relationship was said to have led to marriage, but the comedian later disputed this claim. By the mid-1940s, he made a significant health decision by giving up smoking. His life experiences, filled with humor and adventure, were shared with the world through his writings. These included accounts of his travels to the Soviet Union, his love for golf, and his dedication to entertaining troops stationed far from home. His books serve as a window into his unique journey through the entertainment world and beyond. In the comedic adventure Road to Bali, a humorous nod is made to the Yale Whiff and Poofs when two characters, portrayed by famous comedians, find themselves amidst a flock of sheep humorously referencing the group's well-known melody about lost lambs. In another film, The Pale Face, the same comedian delivers a memorable musical performance with buttons and bows securing the Academy Award for Best Original Song, marking the second time his vocal talents earned him such an honor following the success of Thanks for the Memory. 
His life and career, documented in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives, reflect a rich history of entertainment spanning several decades. In the world of comedy, quick wit and humor can elevate a performer to legendary status. This was evident in a television skit where a comedian found himself trading playful barbs about nose sizes with Jimmy Durante, leading to Durante's humorous remark about being a wholesaler in comparison to the comedian's retailer status. The same comedian also experienced a rare honor outside the entertainment industry. He was invited to participate in a cherished college tradition, dotting the I in Script Ohio, a privilege usually reserved for band members. This gesture underscored his broad appeal and connection with fans beyond the stage and screen. Additionally, his brief appearance in a film, exiting a famous restaurant, missed an opportunity to nod to a past connection with a band leader, highlighting how real-life relationships can sometimes be overlooked in cinematic portrayals. At the young age of four, he embarked on a journey to America with his family, setting roots in Cleveland. There, his early years were marked by a variety of jobs from selling newspapers to trying his hand at chicken plucking and even stepping into the ring for prize fighting. His hard work and diverse experiences paved the way for a successful career in entertainment, spanning over two decades on television and a dozen years on radio. The success translated into a life of comfort as he made a home for himself in a North Hollywood mansion. His talents and contributions to entertainment were recognized at the highest levels. On a memorable day in September 1963, he stood in the White House, honored by President John F. Kennedy with a Congressional Gold Medal. This prestigious award placed him in an elite group, alongside only two other entertainers of his time. His record-breaking achievements didn't stop there. He earned a place in the Guinness Book of World Records not once, but twice. He was celebrated for having the longest-running contract with a single network, an impressive 61-year tenure. Additionally, he was acknowledged as the most honored entertainer, with a staggering collection of over 1,500 awards, reflecting a career that touched many lives and left a lasting impression on the world of entertainment. In a curious twist of fate, a well-known figure once found himself reading his own obituary. It was a mix-up that led to a premature announcement in Congress, no less. This individual took the news with a laugh, showing a light-hearted approach to the error. His connection with the entertainment world extended beyond the screen. He shared a bond with Vicki Lawrence, a familiar face from his USO tours. They later collaborated on television, and he made appearances on her talk show. His presence was also felt in the world of comedy shorts, where he joined forces with Jack Benny and Fred Allen, adding to his diverse body of work. A man of many roles, he became a familiar face at the Academy Awards, hosting the event a record number of times. His commitment to entertaining troops abroad took him to the front lines of several conflicts, bringing laughter and a piece of home to soldiers far from their loved ones. Family was also a cornerstone of his life, with his mother being a talented singer and his brothers involved in various aspects of his business, ensuring that his work was a family affair. Amidst a career that took him from the bright lights of Broadway to the front lines of battlefields entertaining troops, a curious chapter in his personal life raises questions. While he stated he married Dolores in early 1934, official records contradict this, showing his divorce from his first wife was finalized later that same year. Furthermore, no documentation supports his claim of a second marriage during that period. Despite this, his commitment to bringing laughter to those serving their country did not go unnoticed. In recognition of his tireless efforts, he was singularly honored by Congress as an honorary veteran in 1997, a unique accolade reflecting his unique bond with the military. His personal taste in comedy also mirrored that of the legendary Humphrey Bogart, both finding joy in the performances of Danny Kaye, a fellow entertainer who brought smiles to many during that era. A center supporting United Service Organizations and an airport carry his name, honoring his memory and the laughter he brought to many. While some have suggested his motivations for entertaining troops were financially driven, his performances are remembered for bringing moments of joy during challenging times. In a rare Hollywood story, a celebrated couple both reached the age of 100, sharing decades of life and laughter. In his career, this actor brought to life the character of painless Peter Potter in The Pale Face, where a mix-up leads a town to believe he's a sharpshooter, a plot point mirrored in a later Western film. Another memorable role was Sidney Milburn in The Lemon Drop Kit, where he introduced Silver Bells, a song that became a Christmas staple. The film's release was delayed until after the song gained popularity, prompting a reshoot for a grander musical number. 
This song remained a yearly tradition on his Christmas specials, often performed with notable female guests or his wife, becoming a signature piece of his holiday celebrations. He took on the role of Sidney Milburn in the Lemon Drop Kit, bringing laughter and lightheartedness to audiences. His partnership with Marilyn Maxwell was not just on screen, they also joined forces to entertain troops, bringing a piece of home to those serving during World War II and beyond. His dedication to the performing arts extended beyond the screen. In stage, as seen in the Bob Hope Performing Arts Center located at the U.S. Naval Academy's Alumni Hall, a place for new talents to shine. After a long and successful career, he stepped away from the spotlight at 93, leaving behind a final holiday special, Bob Hope's bag full of Christmas memories as a farewell gift to his fans.